I'm starting to see a shift in the tides as someone who watched the gaming industry turn its back on dark, gritty, adult, storyline-driven games, obviously outside of a few outliers like Alan Wake 2. We've watched this industry shift into focusing on grabbing as many kids as humanly possible and bringing them into their microtransaction-riddled ecosystems that we forgot that most of the gaming industry is made up of adults. The last couple of days have given me a lot to look forward to and I now have a small slew of games that I'm actually excited to play. Today's video is going to focus on Delta Force Hawk Ops, the brand new first person shooter from Team Jade that is attempting to take the industry on in a huge way by remaking the Black Hawk Down original campaign from the ground up in Unreal Engine 5, taking the game from that 1993 setting all the way to 2035 in the multiplayer side and giving us an extraction shooter that looks to be filling the void left from games like DMZ, to giving us a battlefield style game mode that pits players against each other in massive combat encounters that's looking to fill the void left by EA and DICE and the Battlefield franchise, all for the entry price of free to play and completely cross-platform among all devices. We got our first look at the Black Hawk Down campaign based on the Ridley Scott movie, as well as the extraction multiplayer, and most importantly, we saw an explosion happen at around 5 FPS, so, you know, pre-alpha's uh, definitely on full display here. Now, I know when I first started talking about Delta Force Hawk Ops, a lot of my audience wrote the game off completely because of this. Recon arrow out. But I have to say, I do think a lot more people are coming around to the game and warming up to the idea that they're actually giving us a full campaign remake of Black Hawk Down, giving us that gritty 1993 war feel while pushing the extraction side into the near future with all of the stuff that most games seem to have nowadays. Gadgets, near future weaponry, more HUD elements, and so on. I know where my audience lies. You guys aren't really interested in the recon arrow out futuristic stuff. You guys are way more interested in the 1993 Black Hawk Down campaign. And I'm kind of the same. I'm excited to play the multiplayer, but I'm way more excited to get into the Black Hawk Down campaign. I like this idea that they want to feed both sides of their audience paying homage to the past while entering into the future with the next generation. The thing that scares me right now based on everything we've seen is, I mean, clearly the lack of optimization and multitude of performance issues within these trailers. The thing is though, these guys are mobile developers, which means they have a lot of experience optimizing their games for the lowest of low system requirements, which means there's absolutely no way this game is going to come out and run like dog shit, right? Right? All jokes aside, the Black Hawk Down trailer starts with a group of soldiers walking through a civilian household. I do wonder if these are AI teammates. I would love to play the game in co-op. K, please, thanks. The civilian children move out of their way. Everyone's looking scared. They're probably smelling the GPUs melting and it's freaking them out. We see at the bottom that this portion of the game is set in Somalia, East Africa in 1993. We get that nostalgic logo reveal as they move into the streets and we get a sick overhead shot while riding in the helicopters. Guys, if you're looking for an experience like this right now, check out Six Days in Fallujah, not sponsored, but it does go on sale quite often and I think most of you would like the game at a very nice discount price. Helicopter lands and this is where we start to see the FPS drops begin. Civilians are running out of the way. Right now, visually, I think the game looks fucking awesome. We get some combat shots, kicking in a breach door and yelling at people to get down. I'm guessing we're gonna have some sort of command system for things like this. We get more combat shots and then we get the grandest shot of them all. Mounted turret position. RPG comes from the top right building and we see the biggest frame drop I've seen since the N64 and the trailer fades to black. Probably the GPU renderer giving out, but is it? We then get a couple of night shots in the game. I, like, I think, like, just take the performance issues out of the way. I, I think the game looks really, really good. Switching focus to the multiplayer extraction side, we get a nice pre-rendered overview of the mission happening within the trailer, where the team is tasked with extracting a mandel brick from a location known as the Tourist Center. The pre-rendered cinematic is giving me major World War III vibes, but eventually we get to the gameplay itself, where we get some pretty basic co-op combat as they infiltrate this center. 
We see the Cantidaim to take out the guy behind the glass, and then, oh, what's this? It's a flamethrower because, of course, it's a, it's a flamethrower guy. You have to slide around his backside and shoot the tanks on his back to destroy him because, of course, that's what you do. They get up to the mandel brick and they kill someone walking here. What the fuck happens to his body? I thought these were AIs, but I think they're trying to portray like, hey, this is another team coming for the same thing. But you can see they go into this down state almost instantaneously when you're shooting them. And it looks fucking janky as hell from the player's perspective of who's actually shooting. But yeah, taking the performance issues out of the equation because hopefully the game's going to eventually be smooth and buttery. The gameplay doesn't look that bad. It's on a AAA level with visuals, animations, particle effects. Uh, I, I like what I'm seeing, but they really need to nail performance and optimization before this game even goes anywhere. Guys, I'm currently watching the renaissance of the industry for people like me. We've gone through the magenta hero shooter phase, and when you see games like Concord get announced from Sony, oh, back in the multiplayer space, but it gets revealed to massive dislikes and thousands of comments stating that this game is going to be dead on arrival, and then we see massive cheers and recognition for an Xbox showcase that shows off a prequel to Gears of War, taking us back to the days where these games actually fucking meant something. To games like No More Room in Hell 2, Stalker 2, Killing Floor 3, getting praised from the community. I see the shift happening, and I foresee a time in the very near future where developers are going to start catering to us again. For the first time in a long time, I don't have that feeling of disconnection from the current landscape. I've been playing a lot of Warzone, Arena Breakout, and actually surprisingly, some Battlefield 2042, just trying to bide my time and enjoy games where I can. But I do feel like the next two to three years are about to be really, really good to us. It's been a time of extreme patience and times where I felt like my passion and my hobby that I've managed to turn into this career has essentially told me to kick rocks and that it no longer wants people like me in the space. Guys who love basic, grounded, gritty experiences, watching showcase after showcase, where we just see more and more of the same looking stylized, cartoonish game shooters and cartoonish shooters. It's been tough. But this is the first time walking away from an E3 game show style weekend, feeling excited for the future. I don't think I've ever felt like this since I've started creating content. And I have a lot of videos that I want to make and a lot of games that I want to talk about. So stick around, subscribe for more videos just like this. Leave a like on the video and let's get this one into the algorithm because it's about goddamn time that we have a slew of fucking games that can actually keep us entertained. The last of a dying fucking breed in this industry kind of feels like we're back. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.